I like having fun. Yeah. I like to laugh. Yeah. I like to meet people no. who can make me laugh. Yeah. I like having fun. Yes, I like it to laugh. Yeah. I like having fun. Yeah. 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 Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Tim Heidecker. Um, I really wanted to start today on a positive note and thank everybody for joining us. Um, we're looking forward to having a great show today. Hello, everybody. It is, uh, well, it's Thursday, November 12th, and it's, you know, 10 a.m. on the Pacific time zone, as, as I could tell. Um, <laughs> I want to make strangers laugh. Well, it's Thursday. Wait a minute, I'm hearing myself. <laughs> what the hell? What is that? That's oh, a, is that me? Is that me? You know, oh, that might be me. 10 a.m. <laughs> I like it. Let's have like That's a, cool. That was, so that was me. Going. That was me. Keep it going. Should we just keep the, keep that going. All right. Yeah. You know, 10 a.m. You know, uh, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say today? I don't have a vi I don't have a clear Wait message I'm today. Myself. Wing myself. Wing myself. And the thing. Wait a minute. And he will raise you up on eagles' wings. There you are, the breath of dawn. Make you to shine like the sun. And hold you in the palm of his hand. All right, good afternoon to some of you out there, honestly. Oh, here we go. How you doing? I work with Stanley Kubrick on 2001. I was the guy in the ape suit. So what the fuck is this? Motherfucker had me in there all day. Couldn't fucking breathe. Oh, fuck Cunt it. told me, we're doing it again. By the way, there's a terrific book oh, again. about... Vic, do you know <laughs> the... What is the connection between my Beatles God damn. and my 2001 Space Odyssey? Does anyone know the connection the there? The connection between the Beatles. Um, I should find out this. There's a man. It's a man. There's a man. There's mm. always a man. Does anyone in the audience know? That'll be the question today. We present to the audience the connection between the Fab Four... And 2001, it's a person. Let's say one of the actors ah. was in the studio at the time when they were recording uh, no, no. Abbey Road. Of, get the fuck mm -hmm. out. Uh, let's take a zoom. Well, hold on. You fucking cunt. <laughs> oh, Is that D Dudley Moore? I love it. A uh, couple oh. things to get out of the way. We've got a terrific show today. We've got Dave Weigel's going to call in from the road. I believe I he, where did he say he was, Matt? He's out there. Covering some of these uh, Stop the Steal protests happening right now. Uh, he's going to gloat. Oh I appreciate God. him. I would hope he would gloat. He deserves to gloat. As he uh, has predicted on our show, our big live election coverage show Tuesday, uh, last Tuesday. Uh, and Constantine Anthony, is a very you're going to enjoy this interview. He is a uh, uh, recently elected city councilman from Burbank who I did some... Uh, fundraising for he is a dsa guy he is a member of the D the democratic socialists of america he's an interesting guy we're going to hear about his uh journey how Too he's complicated life forms getting to know each other right that's exactly correct yeah uh so we got a lot on the plate today a lot of stuff going on obviously we have a uh, america's uh president contesting the election we're following that closely and if you want a good cigar <laughs> 
We uh, we want to talk about the Four Seasons. Obviously, my hit song "Rudy" at the Four Seasons is now being discussed in every major motion, every major uh, music publication from NME, New Musical Express, to all the others. So now it's uh, one of those deals. I throw it up into the into the uh, into the internet, and it, people just fall in love with everything I do. So we're happy cares? for that. My f- uh, <laughs> USA. Today's show, yeah. we should get the, some of the business out of the way very quickly. We are looking, by the way, at 100. We're looking to cross the 100,000 mark on the YouTube subscribers. What does that mean to you, Matt? <laughs> Producer Matt. Big changes. Big, Big changes. changes. Huge, huge growth right. in the past couple months. It's a whole nother number. On the show. It's it's a benchmark that we're excited about. We're at 99,000 and, uh, and change. And 99,500. 99,500. So throughout the course of today's show, we want, we hope to get over that that uh, th- that uh, delineating mark, which God everyone damn. has been really excited about. I know Doug called me this morning around <laughs> six. He said I didn't sleep a wink. All I'm thinking about is is crossing that hundred thousand uh, mark, that benchmark. <laughs> I say, hello, what is it, Doug? It's 6 a.m. What is, is there a problem? An emergency? Tim, <laughs> I heard we're coming up on 100K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're you at 99. Up? You up? I'm up, yeah. I just, well, right. I'm up now. What is it? <laughs> I heard we're coming up on the tw- on the 100K, and uh, I, I just, what do we got to do about this? How are we going to get there? Uh, well, we got to talk about it on the show. Maybe do a sketch where you call me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have one cell phone ringing sound. <laughs> I can just Sit hit that relax. over and over. Enjoy yourselves a cup of three coffee and enjoy the show. Uh, anyways, a lot of exciting things happening in that department. We're obviously <laughs> taking your super chats. If you super chat us today, we will read your comment uh, to the best of our abilities <laughs> if we get time for it. So somebody, <laughs> anytime we get a $5 or more, we'll get the cash register sound. And everyone loves that sound. It's positive reinforcement. Today is City of the Day. We gotta get to City of the Day real quick, guys. Wait, you gotta promote Drop Concert. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Dropconcert.com. 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 This is the deal, folks. A couple months ago, we. Another innovation in the world of live streaming, podcasting, morning radio, morning entertainment. We developed the live drop concert experience. A lot of you were there. You were there, Doug. You were there, Vic. Welcome to the show, Vic, by the way. Thank you. And welcome back, Doug. Thank you, Tim. It's terrific to have you back. Although you really weren't gone because you were a part of the show on Zoom in the past week, and and it's been terrific. I got a couple jokes in, but it's not the same. It's not the same. I'll never leave again. I'm moving into the compound. Oh, are you going to mention that? with me. Tim, that... The compound? The fact that I'm moving into the you compound are, with yes, Vic. Yes, you mm-hmm. are. You guys are sharing. A, I'll be Vic's <laughs> nanny. A, J- uh, Vic and Doug are sharing a twin bed. Uh, it's very interesting. See how that will split work. the chores up. We might. Uh, maybe we should get a Casper sponsorship so we can get uh, Vic and Doug their own beds. Tim, <laughs> Halloween was last week. <laughs> <laughs> very good. No, uh, Drop Concert uh, was a huge success. We had a really fun live stream of Vic and Doug and to some degree me. To a minor degree, almost like a special cameo up here. Shit. And everyone loved it. It was a very popular experience for everybody. Uh, what we did with that is, if you notice, during that, we filmed it with very some of the best cameras they have. Uh, and we edited it because <laughs> I had the vision. I said, this could be a, like a concert film, almost like... Uh, the song remains the same or the last waltz. I have so many great ideas. ideas. Oh, (laughs) stop making sense. So what we did was we edited it. We thought, hey, that's pretty good. But you know what would really crank it up a notch? Give it to the genius Ben Levin. Give it to the genius Ben Levin and say, animate this. Add something to it. Add a level to this. Add a layer to this. And boy, the kid ran with it. I never seen anything like it. Such a burst of creativity Somebody from him. Somebody acknowledge the genius here. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I am. I'm acknowledging uh, Ben Levin is a, is a goddamn a genius. genius. He's a genius. I'm and a creative genius. What, what came out of the thing was this beautiful 
motion picture. It's a film, folks. So what we're going to do is have a screening of it that you're invited to. We're inviting you. The ticket is how much, Matt? Twelve. Give bucks. me the particulars. Twelve dollars. Unless you're a Patreon, it's incredible. nine bucks. It's nine dollars if you're a Patreon. Patreon.com/slash Office Hours Live. But if you're not a patron, that's fine. We still appreciate you. Twelve dollar ticket. Doug and Vic will have a moderator. We'll we'll be there to answer your questions. Are we doing the questions before or after? I think you would traditionally do them after. And we're gonna. There's gonna be a pre-show with some fun best of special videos. How about beforehand videos? we do state? People can do statements. <laughs> you want to make a director's it? statement? No, no, audience statements. Oh, their, instead of questions? Uh, yeah, like that. and then after questions. Okay. Thank you and very much. Like also, beforehand, gonna we're going to show some you. classic videos, Just maybe some unreleased uh, videos from me, right. Vic, and Benjamin it's, Levin. It's, ben, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's our monthly gift, <laughs> except it's not a gift. It's <laughs> just a show. Uh, but it's the way we've been doing it this year, folks. We don't stop just because of the raging Trump virus that has almost has decimated the entertainment industry. We've taken this as an opportunity, despite everything that this our failed, disgraced. I don't call him a president. He's no longer. He is technically the president for another month or so. But we've done too good a job. Good job. <laughs> uh, despite all the odds, we have we have managed to turn lemonade from what was terrible, bitter lemons. Some of the worst lemons we've ever experienced. And so that's what we continue to do. And the audience has been never more, the, the audience has been so appreciative. The messages I get on behalf of, first of all, office hours, drop, concert, enthusiasm is through the roof. The messages on Moonbase have been through the roof. The messages on the stand-up special, through the roof. So everyone's coming, everyone's coming uh, to the table, and they're saying, or they're going to the checkout, <laughs> the checkout <laughs> counter, and say, "Thank you, thank you so much for the wonderful desserts and foods." Um, can I now get? Can I move along now? Thank can I get you, to Tim. the city of the day? Permission granted. City of the day. Well, that's coming in oh. real quiet. <laughs> What City is that? Everybody, get up off your chairs. Come on. City of the day. Ain't much more to say. City of the day. Again, longtime listeners or people that follow the show closely know that there is a code. The code today, perhaps, I don't think it's going to be any help to anybody. The, co the city of the day is Las Vegas, Nevada. Our sponsor today is the Cuckoo. Cuckoo, the cuckoo clock. The cuckoo clock. We all know cuckoo clocks, right? With the bird that comes out. This is the letter Q, coo, as in trying to take over the uh, the country. The cuckoo clock. Are you ready for the apocalypse but waiting for the Q drop to let you know that zero hour is here? Then the cuckoo clock is the exactly clock. The cuckoo clock is exactly what you need. The constant high-pitched whine lets you know the clock is functioning, and the blank face means it's not time to let freedom ring just yet. As Q gets close to calling for a coup, the volume increases until it finally reaches a 140-decibel scream. Then it's time to grab your gun and get to work because it's q coo o'clock The q coo clock also has a suicide mode in the event that George Soros helps Biden steal the election. Easily end your life by splitting your skull in half with an American-made 12-inch steel rotating saw blade. <laughs> what? Just line up the clock with your forehead and the blade. Wow, okay. And let the blade, this is sort of like a Harry Carey situation. The blade will swiftly extend, making one clean cut. Soon you'll be in heaven with all your fellow patriots because where we go, one we out go! <laughs> Oh, so stop refreshing <laughs> HN and relax. The QQ clock has got your back. Terrific stuff, everybody. Let's hear it for the QQ clock. <laughs> Creativity has now reached an apex. <laughs> the mind is sharp. The the funny bone is in a and, and is has been tickled. The, the funny bone is ex exactly a precise, beautiful bone. <laughs> I 
They're singing in the streets, ladies and gentlemen. We've had a comedy revolution this morning. <laughs> Let's see. So the other day, for Las Vegas, I said the, the uh, Las Vegas Strip is the brightest place on earth. So much happiness there. Uh, the weather there is a high of 64 and a low of... Doug, hit me hard with it. 58. 44. Oh, bum, bum, way bum. lower than I thought. Oh, the wind is blowing at three miles an hour. <laughs> it's been cold. I love it. Isn't this like the coldest it's ever been in it's LA? It's wonderfully brisk out. It almost feels like it's an actual East Coast fall Is it weather. still hot out there? <laughs> um, Enough's enough. And... What what do we got else? Uh, well, let's take a zoomer. I want to. What do we got else? You want to get into puns, or you want to just <laughs> take a general? Well, the, I'll take I'll take a pun. I'll take. Uh, hopefully, that do turns into a nice conversation. Sunday? But I'll tell you something, folks. We have a pun. We haven't done puns in a while, and we have a pun contest today, which is frankly around. Uh, we decided it was around the idea of space, planets, space travel, NASA, astronauts, whatever you want, in honor of Moonbase Eight airing on Showtime. Sunday nights. A lot of you just binge the whole thing. You just fucking slammed it down. You can't hang. You can't wait. You can't dole things out. You just slammed it down. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Zach, make some noise so your camera comes up, please. Zach attack. Hey, what's going on? Time for a Zach attack. What's up, Zach? I'm over here at the Four Seasons, but everyone everyone left. So. Oh, you're at the Four long. Seasons. Oh, you're still there. <laughs> Yeah, Rudy. Rudy's over here. He's he's a little upset about how things went the other day. This guy Zach looks like the dudes, the dude from uh, what are they called? The the Trump guys that we've had on the show, the Good Liars. The oh no, oh, yeah. Trump guy. No, the uh, the Good Liar. They, they troll Trump. Yeah, the troll Trumps. Cookies. Oh, that's good. They had a funny video where they t interviewed this woman who was waving a Trump flag, protesting the steal or whatever, and. They were like, yeah, I, sh I know about voter fraud. I got convicted of it last uh, during the last election. She voted twice for Trump and then got caught. Oh, my God. <laughs> so wow. I was like, that's, I'm that's, pretty sure they're like 0 for 12 in court right now with their lawsuits. They're all just ridiculous, fucking stupid lawsuits. Yeah, I saw a couple. I mean, I'm, I'm not following it too closely, but the... Uh, they're all ridiculous. The anecdotal ones were like some of the the affidavits of people. They they were like, I saw this this guy is looking at me weird. He gave me a weird look. That's his. That's the evidence they're bringing forth. Or that the music was too loud. We couldn't. I don't know. Uh, yeah. What 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 what, 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 what well, Zach? What what do you got? I mean, we could talk about this all day. But what what do you got for me today? I got space puns or the fact that I don't know if you saw that lieutenant governor from Pennsylvania, Fetterman. That dude is freaking awesome. I don't know if you've seen him at all. He looks like this huge, like, yeah. mechanic dude. He's awesome. Yeah. Vic. We were trying to get, get him on the Vic, show this week. what's your connection to him? Oh, he just please follows try me. to get That's him on the show. He just oh, follows me. That's, he I thought follows you anybody from Pennsylvania, probably. Oh, uh, I thought you had some kind of personal connection to him. No, he's, I mean, he's he's always around Bethlehem. He's, he's at the Brew Works a lot. Is he a... a, a, a like a Bethlehem guy? No, he's not. But he's like around there. Like, there's a lot of events there, oh, okay. and yeah, I just know people like him in the in the area. What is his backstory? Do we know? Like, is, I don't know. He does seem like he was either like is a he? security guard or a, a, yeah, pro Metallica wrestler, security guard. He's awesome. His wife is awesome too. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet she is. <laughs> What's her deal? I think she's like um. She's an undocumented immigrant, but she like makes no, makes no, uh, you know, secret about it. She's proud of it. She's yeah. pretty cool. Okay. And he's and he's close, like with the governor, it seems. And he's like, like he's you know, I think able to push Wolf a little further to the left. Mm. I would think, you know, just based on their yeah. conversations Look. I see online. Okay. His, All right. What's your official Zach, what's photo? Your, what, is amazing. What's yeah, your pun? Amazing. What's your pun? I got puns. Go ahead. Kick it off. Kick off the day I with a fun space pun. All right. Uh, what's our universal uh, interstellar form of currency? What is our universal interstellar form of currency? I'd love to know because that's going to come I, in handy. I. This was one of mine. Starbucks, right? Oh, Vic, you got this one? Star you can Star do the review. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Is it Starbucks? Is it Starbucks? It's Starbucks. Nice. I got it. I got one. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Doug, I kick it over to you. Why does the slob prefer steak over salad? Why does the slob... Prefer steak over salad. 
Because it's meteor. <laughs> uh, oh, it's meteor. Well, that reminds me. I got. Um, I'm, I'm starting off slow. I'm gonna hit you that, with that. That was one of my. I had. I had that too. You had Sorry, a meteor. I had, a meteor uh, I had to get one. that That's out because I figured someone's we're gonna, doing meteor. We're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna get there. I, I got another one. Okay, it, go ahead. ahead. I, well, I got Vic, a, we should let Vic do one. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead, and then I'll go. I'll go. Go ahead, Zach. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. All right. Why was the moon panhandling for money? Why was the moon panhandling panhandling for money? I have no idea. Yeah. It was down to its last quarter. Okay. <laughs> right, we've, we're gonna That's start. Good. We're gonna. We're gonna. I think All we're right, gonna stop down. Here. Let me get. Let me. We're do gonna stop one. down office hours. Yeah, let me do a moon uh, one. After I need this. to retool Vic, everything. Let, let Vic do one. I'll, I got a moon one. I'll do. I don't even know if this is a pun technically, but it's. <laughs> how did the swimmer die in outer space? How did the swimmer? <laughs> well, geez. I mean, how did the swimmer die? Was he wearing a spacesuit? No, he came up for air. Does that make sense? He came up for air because you, when you're swimming, you come up for air and breathe, and you can't breathe in space. Wow. Yeah. Let me try another one. Let me try another. One. Where's the Where's what? the fucking sound? Where are the drops? Where's the? Eh? That was my first one. Hold, that was the first one I came up with. Uh, what chewy candy do astronauts like best? <laughs> Starburst. <laughs> no, Hubble gum. <laughs> I like that. Uh, well, help me out with one because I've got. How, I've got can, how can you tell the moon is getting ready for a date? How can you tell the moon is getting ready for a date? I don't know. It's waxing. Ah, I appreciate that Ooh. one. I got one more for you guys, then I gotta go. Okay, well then we have to. You, you gotta it's go. Not you, it's not you guy. that have to go. It's I that. It's I that has to go. What do you I'm think? We're just hanging my out. My work day to your excellence. What do you got, Zach? Um, my son is obsessed with the moon. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping it's just a phase. Ah! <laughs> mm -hmm. Very, Very good. good. Thank you, Very Zach. Good. You came with some heat. You came with some fire. Yeah, All the best. Love you. Moon, love moon Base 8, thank you. Thank you, buddy. Love you, Take Vic. care, love Vic. Vic. Zach, take care. Take Bulk. care. Um, was, that my take care was that a finalist? Was that a finalist, that me. last one? Absolutely. Yeah. Why didn't the moon go outside? Why? Because it was waning. <laughs> Doug, can you write one for me if yeah. I give you the premise of the, where the I'm premise. going for? Yeah, I'll work on it. I'm thinking of the Milky Way, right? Mm -hmm. But whey is also a way of describing milk, right? Mm -hmm. Whey, curds, and whey. Run with that one, would you? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> can I just take it in a different direction? Yeah. Okay. Right now? Or can I think about it? I want to you watch talk about something else. I want to watch the gears okay. turn. I want to see it happen in music. real time. Do you want a drum roll for this? Or? Uh, Why... Uh, Oh, I got one. Who was sitting on her thing, and then she was eating curds and whey, and then some spider came in? <laughs> Who? Who is that? Uh, no, this isn't Ms. it. Is, oh, this isn't is, it is that part of uh, Miss Miss Muffet? Muffet. Miss Muffet. Fucking okay. Muffet. <laughs> How about this? Um, <laughs> something like say milk. He weigh. He weigh like he weighs it. When when like little Miss Muffet that. was in Mexico, what was she eating? Little Miss Muffet was in Mexico. When little Miss Muffet. Ladies and gentlemen, from the fairy tale, was in Mexico. What was she eating? And somebody asked her what she was eating in in broken English. What did she? Say? What is it? Milk e way. <laughs> e is like and. A uh, milk e. Look, you put me on the spot here. All right. Why Why did Steven Spielberg end up using MDMA and dancing at a rave while writing his <laughs> 1982 cinema classic? When they came up with the title, he thought they were telling him to eat e. <laughs> <laughs> Eat E. Why did Uranus fart? <laughs> Why? I don't know, but NASA, good question. <laughs> NASA, good question. Na NASA, good question. Uh, all right, let's move on from that. Let's pause. We can do puns all day long. Okay, I'll, I got more for later. You do. We understand that. Uh, let's talk to somebody else, Matt. You No more puns, though? What? You aren't listening. What you I'm saying is, <laughs> let's move on from the puns. We'll return to them throughout the show. I just don't want to get... I don't want to get mired in them. Okay. Okay. All right, Julian. No <laughs> puns, Julian. We have uh, first don't worry. Don't worry. the first son of John Lennon, Julian Lennon, with us today. Hey Tim, how you doing, uh, Vic hey. and uh, uh, and, and oh, Doug? God, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Doug, Doug, I'm so sorry. Uh, you guys put me on the spot. Such um, short well, memories. Foremost, People go like, "Oh, Doug wasn't on the show last week. I guess he's he no longer alive." Jeez. 
Uh, just want to make a quick announcement. I am 66 days without alcohol. Yeah, so I'm really, there he really is. Really Julian is that. killing whoa, it. Whoa, whoa. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, but thank I went you down guys to the so corner store your... this morning. What I don't know what I got up this morning. I got one of those little Smirnoff bottles. Drank it right away. <laughs> right, the whole thing down. And now I'm drinking Listerine. What the hell's wrong with me? You no, know, that's terrific. Sadly, Congratulations, I, Julian. That's great, man. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, actually, it got to a really bad point where I was drinking, uh, like, uh, what is it? You, you make a uh, cake with it and stuff. I was drinking that. That was Ooh. Really bad. Cake? But, uh, uh, vanilla extract, uh, he's uh, saying? Yeah, extract. Yeah. Fuck that's how bad it was getting for me. Oh, my but God. I'm much better. I'm much better Let now. Let me ask you, and was it, was it, um, was when you're when you get to that place, are you doing that to just feel normal or to feel yes. fucked up? Yes. It's not to to feel normal. What would you feel you, like you know, without that? To... You just feel like sick and like um, uh, it, it, yeah. ag aggravated. Yeah, it, and you're you're absolutely right. I was doing it to feel normal, and that's when you know it's getting bad. To alleviate um, anxiety, guilt, depression, but also just the pains that you're feeling uh, for being hungover. Uh, you know, it's it's something I do not wish upon anyone, and I t I'm telling anyone uh, this could go to, with your friends and family and to anyone in the OHL community. If you feel like you have an issue, by all means, uh, get you know get looked at. I mean, right now is the time uh, to really take care of yourself. Yeah. And I, as for as bad as this year has been, I gotta say the silver lining to all of this has been just taking care of yourself. And with that, like getting back to bring this to OHL, this has been such a treat for me. Um, you guys are so talented and you guys have been very inspiring. Matt, you have been an excellent producer. Vic, uh, with your work uh, at uh, Flannel Graph. Um, I, I listened, uh, my buddy uh, Jared Chief of Flannel Graph Records posted right. one of your songs. You have such an unassuming angelic voice and wow. I love listening to it. You That's are very so sweet good. Of you, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. And, and Vic, you are just, you are like the Thelma Schoonmaker of our generation. You are extremely talented, and I hope you are going to be the next Thelma Schoonmaker, and Tim Heidecker will be uh, your Scorsese. <laughs> what? What do I have to do now? <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice of you. Dear. But, uh, and la last thing, I just want to say the, the very last track on oh, uh, your new album, um, uh, the Waste Blood track, so beautiful. Oh my well, the whole God, record's great. So I mean, I don't know if we need to focus on the one where she sings the lead vocals. <laughs> right? I mean, everything's a qualification. Yeah. Somebody on Twitter said about Moonbase, they go, man, two of the funniest actors and Tim Heidecker together, this is terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Uh, anyways, thank you so much. We're, we're rooting for oh, you, Julian. So uh, yes. Terrific Keep it up, man. Uh, life Take advice. Care, peace and love. Thank you, bud. And it's a good, it's a good thing. Peace if you love. do feel like it's, you know, it is, it is a truly a uh, addiction is a, a, a biological medical you know, disease. So, you know, go to your doctor, talk to your doctor. If you feel like you're drinking too much or really? you're smoking too much weed or you're eating the wrong things, like talk to your doctor about it, man. It's I, tough. So life much. is a, life Love is tough, man. It's tough. I'm still like, not, you know, I was losing weight and then I was on a good track and then Halloween comes and I'm pounding Snickers, pounding them. The pounding. And then my <laughs> wife comes back with some C's candy. Hi, yo. That shit's better than anything else. Seas, almonds. I don't even know what that covered is. Covered in chocolate. You did a great job. It's a local candy company. You did a great job. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Julian. All the best to you. For sure. Life I mean, is I've hard. Been, I've been cutting down on the drinking too, and I'm probably, I'll probably eventually just quit altogether. It's uh, good advice. All right. <laughs> Uh, we should uh, let's bring Constantine Anthony oh, on. Oh, Constantine he here. Is okay, here. cool. Let's Constantine. just go right into it. Stuff that ass with a lot of butter. Hey guys. Now Constantine Anthony is with me. This is exciting. Congratulations on your big victory. On uh, was it Tuesday that it, it happened? Normal election it was, style. Yeah. So we're at nine nine days out. Uh, Tuesday night was the uh, election, and uh, I am now I'm now council member elect in uh, the city of Burbank. So. Here we go. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, it's not official until the music plays. So can I you. ask you, were you uh, were you confident in your win, or was it a big upset surprise? Uh, well, <laughs> no, I'm just curious. We, I don't... we knew 
like our team knew we were going to win because we had all the internal metrics showing right showing that we were way ahead and you know it's the way you contact people and then how many positive responses you get back and then you can extrapolate that out to the electorate so we knew we were going to win but we weren't sharing that with anybody right <laughs> I'll tell you, a lot of people were surprised <laughs> yeah i mean were you running against so you ran as a as a member of the dsa that's right and <clears throat> were you running against a, a democrat or a republican or how does that work in that in the city council yeah, it's kind of tough. So it, it, there's five members of the city council and only two seats were up this year. Right. Um, and it's at large. So the whole city gets to vote on all the seats. It's not like L.A. where the, there's districts. Right. <clears throat> and basically you run as no party. So you're not a Republican or a Democrat on the ballot. Right. Uh, it's just your name and your job title. But uh, I ran against seven other people. There were eight candidates running wow. and you know a lot of them were you know uh, democrats because it's a big democratic sure. uh, stronghold adam schiff territory as yeah. i like to call it um but i was the only one running as uh, an avowed socialist i was endorsed by dsa i was also endorsed by socialist alternative those are the guys that put uh, uh shama sawant in, in in her seat in seattle city council and um i was the only candidate they endorsed this entire election cycle because wow. you know they're very they're very strict. They have they a high only bar. endorse like actual Marxists. Right. They have a high bar. Or a low bar if yeah, you're on the other side of the spectrum. Um, but so <laughs> what's your back? What's your story, man? Like what what got you to this place now where you're, you know, this was this became something you wanted to do? Um, well, I was, uh, you know, I was an actor and comedian. Uh, I was an actor for 10 years, a comedian for 20 years. I actually do improv comedy. I'm a main stage player over at Comedy Sports here in Los Angeles. And, you know, I've taught at Second City, I've gone through the, the, the Groundlings and the iOS and all of that stuff. Um, and so I never, you know, thought I'd be doing this in a yeah. million years. Um, but I, I was diagnosed uh, autistic um, uh, just over 12 years ago. And for me, watching how uh, improv really helped me with my communication and my interaction, I really got into teaching uh, improv uh, to autistic teenagers. Uh, wow. That's what happened to me. I, I started doing improv in high school. Um, and from there, I started to see how much is missing in our disability advocacy in this country, not just in California, but across the whole country. And I started getting into disability rights uh, advocacy and fighting for that kind of change. And that led me to uh, helping uh, political campaigns in 2016 um, Interesting note, Hillary Clinton, when she ran, was the first pres uh, presidential candidate ever to have a disability rights platform. Right. And that was very interesting. A lot of people didn't talk about it. It wasn't big news. Uh, right. So I actually worked on her team uh, to get that passed. I was a Bernie fan. I voted for Bernie, and all of my friends were disappointed uh, when he lost that year. But um, I went and joined her team. Uh, you know, it's funny. I found a bunch of other uh, Bernie Kratz also on her team going, well, what else are you going to do? Yeah, we gotta stop yeah you can't just go Let's hide. Go. Exactly, exactly. So we went and worked and, um, you know, we got her up to $15 minimum wage. Uh, we got her to do $125,000 salary and under for free college. A lot of stuff that, that it was Bernie folks who uh, jumped into her uh, team and uh, pushed her to the left. And we were really proud about that. But the disability rights part was where I really started. And, you know, after Trump won, I didn't know what else to do. So I actually, I ran for city council uh, four years ago, um, right after his election, just on a whim to see if I could do it. Like a, a bunch of friends of mine are like, hey, you can talk in public, go, right. go run for city council. Right. And uh, apparently I'm pretty good at it. So <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Yeah, are you are you have you bit off? Uh, are you now saying like oh, you're not like Trump who said who must have been like oh I didn't think I was gonna win fuck now I got to do something. <laughs> no, how are you going to? So what are you you what are you gonna do when you get into this city council? Like uh, what are your what's your uh, what's your goal? Well, you know the 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 top goal of course currently is the the pandemic recovery. So we're doing a lot of economic planning. One of the big things that I got the um, the endorsement from Socialist Alternative for was. Uh, advocating for uh, a wealth tax. So in California, the the most valuable thing you can own is land. And so what I'm pushing for now is to put a measure on the ballot for the next election to tax uh, square footage. So uh, percentage, you know, uh, uh, 15 cents a square foot on anything over the fi first 1,500 square feet. So like small homes and small businesses are exempt, right. but you know places like 
Kaiser and Disney and Amazon. Right. We're getting an Amazon warehouse is going to get taxed and we're going to take that money and we're going to give it to the schools. We're going to build infrastructure. We're right. going to do things, you know, to help the folks here in the city. So that's a big component. And then of course, you know, rent control uh, Burbank, Burbank is one of the last cities in LA County that does not have any sort of renter protection. So we're going to work on that. Right. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. When I, th uh, this morning, as I was showering, I'll give you guys a little visualization of that. <laughs> there I am showering with a bar. I use a bar of soap. I'm scrubbing it up. Everywhere, Constantine. I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but I clean it. I clean everywhere, okay? Um, and I'm thinking. Totally <laughs> you have a nice diplomatic smile on your face. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking, what is like the what is like the most kind of granular like uh, issue that I would want to get involved in on a, like a, on a close on a smaller local level? And it, it, the thing that comes really quickly to me is homelessness and the or houselessness, if you want to, whatever, however you want to describe it. But, uh, you know, just driving around this city, this this incredibly wealthy, prosperous uh, city with full all kinds of amazing, uh, you know, culture in it and and really smart, good people all over the place. Seeing the the tent cities along the Ellie River, seeing the pockets of under the bridges, just you know, two three miles down from my house, there's a there's a bridge that's just just full tent city. That's where I would think a lot of my energy would go in if I was able to be in some kind of local government role or just in my private life. Like, we got to do something about this. It's nuts. Yeah, and it's actually, um, speaking of private lives, I've, I've been homeless uh, three times in my life. Wow. So my disability, uh, you know, prevents me from holding and keeping certain kinds of jobs and, 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 and that kind of issue, you know. Right. And I find a lot of my other friends who are autistic or have other neurological disabilities have a hard time paying the rent and, and holding down a job and, and they're often homeless. And so for me, one of the reasons I garnered so much support was that <clears throat> I was running to solve homelessness from the standpoint of being homeless. Yeah, that's well, a great well, perspective to have. I mean, what a story to be able yeah. to tell as you're talking about this to people. I mean, you mentioned showers, but in Burbank, we had a, a, a shower facility. It's called the Burbank Temporary Aid Center. And it used to give showers five days a week. And now they've cut services down to three days a week. And I'm sorry, but, you know, three yeah. days. If you're trying to go out and get job interviews and you're trying to, you know, apply for stuff as, as an unhoused person, you need to be able to get services when you need them, not on the you know time clock of some bureaucracy right. that was made up by the city. I got These an idea. Problems are, are, Doug's got an idea. I can't wait for this. Now Johnny Carson used to be live out of Burbank, right? And um, now it's yeah. now it's in New York or something. Can you bring him back to Burbank? <laughs> bring Johnny Carson back? Yeah, I'll bring Johnny Carson back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we uh, have a plan to resurrect uh, the body of Johnny Carson. Wow. And uh, some weird wild him. stuff. That should be top of the list. That is some weird wild day stuff. Day one. Should be some day one kind of thing. <laughs> uh, well, I just think, yeah, I just think homelessness is such a tangible thing where you can see like, geez, that seems like kind of, it feels like kind of something you could actually do something about with a little bit of cash and a little bit of, you know, yeah. inv uh, investment and a little bit of, you know, planning. Come on. Absolutely. Like, and one of the big problems, I mean, this sounds like it's a totally, you know, easy shot to make, but there are so many people who live in these kinds of cities that say, oh, yes, I want to help homelessness. And they say, okay, great. We're going to build a shelter uh, on the end of your block. And they go, oh, no, no, no. Not, not here. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere else. Not right. in my backyard. Right. And that's the biggest problem. You get people who are like very liberal, very left leaning, you know, they voted mm -hmm. for Obama. They want to vote for Obama a third time, that kind of people. Right. And it's like, they just don't want to do the work themselves or have it be a burden to them. Right. It's, it's a hard hill to climb. It just seems like, obviously there's, I mean, unless you're talking about a utopian uh, Walt Disney world, Walt Disney Epcot futuristic situation. There's always going to be people that are going through tough times. There's going to be the potential for homelessness, or there's going to be people that prefer that way of life. You know, that that's a whole thing too. But the rate that it's at now, and it's only going to get worse next, you know, because the pandemic, the consequences of that are going to be, you know, the aftershocks or the force, whatever, the shock shocks are still like, are, you know, rampant right now. But uh, it feels like there's got to, we got to figure out a better system. I, I could talk about it a lot yeah, more, but go ahead. 
and, Final and word. if we if, if we tackle it, that's the thing. If we put enough investment into it, yeah, it's going to be a big burden at the beginning. But as we get people housed, as we get people into jobs, as we mm -hmm. get people medical care and uh, addiction care yeah. and job training, the the number the total number of people is going to go down, and you're only left with that really really small minority population that will right. exist in every society. Yeah, and that's manageable. That's manageable yeah. for any city. For sure. Um, what are you doing? What is that? I'm putting on inspiring it's, music. It's, it's, a final... it's, it's a little weird. <laughs> um, you're an inspiration to me, uh, Constantine. Uh, by the way, I think it should be Anthony Constantine. Can we yeah. make that happen? That's a lot easier <laughs> to remember. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to the Screen Actors Guild, but that's my patience. <laughs> uh, congratulations again. How can people find you? Because I think it's interesting. People out there, my audience, might be interested in getting into government on a smaller level or at least finding people that they've they like and uh, we're, we're, you're on Twitter, obviously. What are you, Constantine yeah, yeah, Anthony? I'm, yeah, you can go to my website, ConstantineAnthony.com. I'm on most other social media as Constantine in California, which is just a CA. Okay. But also to everyone else watching, if you want to get involved, you don't have to run. But every city, every county, every municipality has boards and commissions and committees. You get appointed, you get involved, just start showing up. Go to the city council meetings. Most people, when I talk to them, I say, Who's your city council member? Who's your mayor? Who's your state assembly member? Yeah. Who's your state senator? People don't we're, even know we're, these. We're divorced questions. from it. We all get so wrapped up in the the, the presidential stuff, yeah. which I you know it's fun, or it's yeah. you know not necessarily fun, but it's it's it grabs your attention for on, a man. lot of good reasons. But <laughs> there's way more. There we're very politically ignorant when it comes to the where you know our surroundings. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Go ahead, like, Vic. You're you're an out socialist, and I'm sure like that term has been soiled by the right you know and mis misrepresented and everything how how do you convince people to get on board with all the the great things that you're trying to do and the, and the the medicare for all and, and all all of those cool things that people will they it'll benefit people in society but then they hear socialism you know what i mean is it is it they just to work, yeah is it is it are yeah. you going to work towards normalizing it or how do you go about that well, I mean, I've been a socialist most of my life. I, you know, right. <laughs> way before, I mean, I, I learned what socialism was in 1988 at the fall of the Berlin Wall. I looked it up as a kid. I'm like, wait, so everybody gets a little bit of something? Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, <laughs> but for me, when people say, hey, how can you be a socialist? You know, Bernie Sanders really changed how the entire country views socialism the rest of the world really doesn't have these hang-ups that mm. the americans have with the red scare and so i just remind them i'm like you know albert einstein was a devout socialist martin luther king was a democratic socialist right. helen keller was a democratic socialist she actually went out and spread the word of democratic socialism and you talk to anybody in those circles and they do some research you give them a, just a little bit of time to figure out what's going on pull them out of the rhetoric, pull them away from Fox News, mm. and they realize it's not really a bad thing. It's the next evolution of our economic system. Right. You know, capitalism and democracy really don't work too well together. They work okay, a little bit better than than uh, uh, monarchy and, Serfdom, and uh, yeah. democracy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we've moved so far away from that now, we don't need capitalism anymore. We need uh, workers to be able to control the means of production. We need, you know, working class people to be able to get the benefits of the society in which they live. We don't need a ruling class anymore. I mean, it's a joke that we think, oh, five guys in a room smoking cigars can decide all of our fate. That's not how it works anymore. Right. If you want a good all right. Show, Thank you, Constantine. A, a pleasure to get to know you a little bit, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, Let's hear it. Take care. Want a good cigar. Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. <laughs> Do we know who? Uh, Come on. <laughs> have we told people who's playing the trumpet on that song? Does anybody know? Does anybody want to guess? Oh, and we also have trivia about the the Beatles. Uh, Beatles uh, 2001 to get oh, yeah. to. Oh, so someone got it in the chat. Know? Let's oh, really? Does anybody want to? Let's take who a had zoom the answer? answer. Who had the answer to the Beatles chat? DM me real quick. The Beatles quiz. <laughs> Somewhere over Nobody? the rainbow. Nobody. You know who's doing that? Well, let's That's take a let's take a rando. I don't know. Joe Rogan. All right. No. Uh, One of our uh, 
uh, is that you? One of our ladies in the Zoom would be nice David to hear Lynch from. David Lynch on trumpet. Oh, All right. G get. Oh, we G- got a group. We always like talking about group. We got a party. Oh, a super spreader event. Peter Char. P- Pizza. Hello. I am, Hello. I'm. Oh, hi guys. Big party. What is going on? Are you guys? Are, are you guys uh, being we safe? Are in Dublin. Yeah, we all live together. <laughs> That's right. We live together. What is that? The guy from Queer Eye for the straight guy behind you there, with the hair and the beard and everything. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? Oh, that's Russell Brand. Hey, <laughs> doing? Are you doing all right? She did, she did the hair. That was me. So where are you guys? You said you're in Dublin. Yeah, we're in yeah. Dublin. Yeah. Just one person really talk. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> find you. I want to see you guys nominate a spokesperson for this group. And now the I've rest been of you. Nominated. The rest of you shut your mouth and let him speak because I can't have everybody chiming in. Now, what is it that you want? Uh, we're, we're wondering how you can diversify your audience because I'm looking through and it's it's uh, it's insane. It's a sea of white here. I know. Look, I know. At, look at your room, though, too, though. Well, I mean, that's a sea of yeah, white. Yeah, why don't you diversify? Uh, well, I, I actually got a woman no, here. I, 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 yeah. hey, great. Oh, there we go. Okay. I actually have an Irish space pun. Okay, well, let's hear an Irish space pun from producer Matt. You guys want to hear it in Ireland? Okay, I was traveling in I, I, Ireland. I only want to hear from Vic. Oh, okay, all right, Vic, you got one. No, no, no hold on. I'll give you my I'll, Irish. This guy doesn't run the show. I run the go show. Ahead, go ahead, Matt. Irish. Okay, so Ooh, I was what? traveling in the countryside in Ireland, <laughs> and <laughs> suddenly <laughs> I, I really had to go to the bathroom real bad, and I was in the middle of nowhere in the countryside, <laughs> and I'm driving along. I'm looking for a bathroom. And finally, I see a shepherd, and I say, oh, you know, excuse me, sir, I really have to go to the bathroom. Can you help me out? Where, where can I use the bathroom? And he said, oh, you just go over yonder to the John Glenn. Plenty of bathrooms there. All righty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the John Glenn. Yeah. The good. John good. Glenn. Hey, look at that beef. What is that? Uh, is that some Irish stew you got there, kitty? Aye, it's the oh, Irish uh, beef stew, uh, eh? It's smoking. <laughs> Can you smell it? Yeah. Is it lamb stew, eh? Shepherd's pie. Beef. Beef. Yes. I. It says I, too hot to eat. I'm starstruck. All right. Listen, I don't know what to do about the diversity issue. I've got a lot of, I don't know. It's, what do you want me to do? You it's guys, tell than a Wilco concert. Here. Tell Matt to stop locking them out. Right. Locking the, the different diverse people out. You know? I mean, wider the better, you know. That's what that's what we say in Dublin. No, no, come they on. don't Get say that there. there. That's not nice. Oh, oh yeah. 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 That's that's nice. Nice. And simple. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, what you guys up to? You just hanging out, watching the show? We've been sitting around for weeks trying to plan what to say when we eventually get called on. <laughs> um, and get to talk to you. Um, well, it's a great opportunity and, to ask any questions you might have about uh, my work or. Uh, any life well, advice yeah, I can offer you? Plan on, uh, how do you plan on uh, taking down the Titan of Podcast, Joe Rogan? I assume you guys have a battle plan or something planned out to to, to attack him. Because Friendly person. Just on for to too long. Fun. I don't. I don't care. I don't really care, you know, that much. I miss you. I just, uh, my, the only Brown. thing I did was... I've been paying for Spotify for a long time. Calm down. Because it's a kind of an easy pla- it's an easy way to get music. You know, it's it's fairly well designed to yeah, listen I was, to music. I was looking for a quicker answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. This guy's a piece of work. I'm gonna cut look at this guy in the back eating his fucking stew with the steam coming off it. Can you wait till I'm done talking before you're cramming that stew in your mouth? <laughs> So all I did was I canceled my Scott Spotify because the this guy had weird. Alex Jones on for three hours spouting a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of oh, good. shit about vaccines and this whole crazy conspiracy about scary. the like that, Democrats man. being Satanists. It's like, you know, he, he, the he's fucking the guy's talking about though, eating yeah. what? He's got I, the documents. He says he's got the documents. I got yeah, the documents. Yeah. I got this <laughs> in... Uh, uh, just just came to me. This classified stuff is from an inside source. It says that Joe Biden has just eaten uh, uh, baby brains and that he's been speaking with uh, he has uh, Emmanuel Lewis. Emmanuel Lewis used to play Webster. 
Uh, Emmanuel Lewis has all been. Uh, they've been using uh, Emmanuel Lewis's semen <laughs> to uh, uh, make these baby farms happen, so they can have these babies that come out real tiny. <laughs> Is that Emmanuel Lewis? He passed away. We've discussed this before. Has he passed I away? Know, mama. Yeah, he did die. He did die. But we we've, we've frozen uh, we frozen the sperm samples from Emmanuel Lewis. So he is able to, uh, Democrats and Soros are able to farm uh, baby farms off of uh, Webster's uh, semen. So, I don't know. I don't care. You want to listen to that shit? Go ahead. What do I care? Breaking news. Go ahead. Amanda Lewis is not dead. Sorry. Gary Coleman is. Yes. Sorry. We've, I think we go through this about every once every six week. months. Yeah. We do. <laughs> All right, you uh, you fucking mix, you Irish <laughs> rotten <laughs> potatoes. Say hi to Greg for us. Huh? Say hi to uh, Greg for us and Mark. Of course. I hope they're doing well. Of course. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Thank All the best, you, guys. May the luck of the yeah, Irish uh, smile like on Cut his mic. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's got to go. He's got to go. First of all, he's so handsome. He's kind of weird. I broke him. They made you laugh. Why was Jupiter stoned? I need to talk to Fran. Fran. Tim, I got to get my puns in. Yeah, get it in. Get it in. You got like thirty. Fran, how you doing? Can we see Fran? Go ahead. Now what? I think her is her audio working. Did you unmute her? Uh, I I don't have that option with her. Yeah, I think that's because her audio is not working. Fran, Mm. I does your can you turn your audio on? Let's talk to. Oh, oh, wait a minute. No, that's, so yeah, good. she heard it broken. Let's it talk to David so and Katrina. All that cheese. David and Why Katrina. They've got puns. All you right. You have asbestos mouth. <laughs> I can't have too much. You can have a little yeah. too much. <laughs> you guys have uh, Julia Child. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at the little baby. Aww. Ah, a newborn. Pretty new, two months old. Congratulations. Her What's her name? Winnie. Windsor. We call her Winnie. Winnie? But from the Wonder Years. Funny enough, from the Wonder Years, it's her. Interestingly, she was, the, she was the baby that your daughter suggested the name of Lucy back on episode 102. Oh. Called in for, for advice. We didn't go with Lucy. I understand. But only because uh, my cousin's name Lucy. So. That causes some trouble. Oh, yeah. uh, well, you got that rocking chair there. That's perfect. What are you in a bar? It looks mommy, like you're mommy. in a pub. Mommy, mommy. It's our home. Yeah, it looks like a pub. It's a, it's an <laughs> old wooden. Old wow, it's beautiful. Look at this Good. life. Yeah. So happy. You you're glowing. Mama? Hi, Winnie. Yeah. I'm gonna be your favorite comedian when you grow up. <laughs> yep. <It's> Uncle Tim. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi. Or will I be well, irrelevant? We've got puns. Okay. I'm going to be irrelevant by the time Winnie gets I'm going to be like washed up. <laughs> Just like they said. And my career's we'll over. The uh, E True Hollywood story. Be in the homeless we'll camps. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> Tim. That's grim. In Burbank with that. Like Tim. That guy won't well, be doing anything. I understand. About I know the city councilman. That do nothing Democrat to is going to do nothing. I just Tim. want to talk to him. <laughs> get out of here, you scum. Get What's your pun? Go. Okay. Uh, so. You guys know Galileo, right? He's been called Galileo, the father, Galileo. the one and only father of modern science. So the truth is, he was a total sham. He was a drunk, and he was legally blind. He couldn't have made the discoveries that oh, he's no. given credit for. Oh my God! His he had an assistant named uh, Peter Viviani, <laughs> and he was the one that made all the discoveries. Ah. The story goes that one one night the archdiocese in charge of heavenly discoveries was sent from the Vatican and you know was there to meet with Galileo to to discuss the different stars and different discoveries in the sky. Galileo was drunk off his ass mm. and uh he was totally out of his depth because his assistant had gone right. to run some errands. And when the archdiocese pointed at this one blurry spot and said, Well, what's that? Galileo said is that jupiter because his assistant name was uh peter (laughs) (laughs) pretty good listen your wife seems to love it and that's all that counts 
Your wife seems. I've got one more. She's I've proud of you. She's like, I'm. I love him. He's an idiot, but I love him. <laughs> He's mine. He's. <laughs> He's gonna be a good dad. <laughs> I'm just glad he's not trying to do this professionally. That's the key. If he was trying no, to go for it. this professionally, we'd have problems. But he's it's his fun little hobby. <laughs> and I, I support him. <laughs> go ahead. What's your second one? Let's see if he can was... redeem himself, Doug. All right. Do you know see. you want to know my favorite favorite Elton John song? I do. Or Rocket, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had that one. <laughs> but right. that's not, I don't know. I, I mean, it's funny that we've taken Paul's Rocket Man and used it for Elton John purposes, but it's not a pun that, because Elton John's song, Rocket Man, is about space. It's a, it's a literal, mine it's not a mine play on bad. words. So he was saying the, the drop, he was saying Rocket Man, right? I mean, yeah. So there you go, it works. But that's no, because what he, the question he was asking was, "What's Elton John's favorite? What's my favorite Elton song. favorite Elton John song?" Well, uh, the answer is "Rocket Man." It should have been something like, been, "How did yeah. the guy get to the moon?" Rocket Man. Yeah, that you know, you know what I'm saying. Like the question, that's important. That's <laughs> an important mean? aspect. So, yeah. And now the wife has cool. left you. She's Look at your wife has left <laughs> you. Cool. We made she's our like, baby cry. She's like, I, going back to the I'm going to give you one more chance to redeem yourself in front of the Trinity. <laughs> And if you blow it, I'm out of here, and I'm taking little Winnie with me. And now you're, you're now you've got nothing. I'm alone. All right. Going to join you in the tent cities. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Anyways, it's, it was a nice effort, but the audience is nonplussed. I've got a music-related <laughs> uh, pun. Can I try this? Go ahead. All right. Did you hear Neil Armstrong's review? Oh, Neil Armstrong got into uh, music critique. By the way. Did you hear Neil Armstrong's <laughs> review of the collaboration record between Till Tuesday and the cast of Mad About You? It's one small step for Amy Mann, <laughs> one giant leap for Richard Kind. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Hey, you want to try some super chats? I have a new yes. method. I'm okay. trying like a copy paste thing. Where in the uh, Google Doc? Yeah, go in the doc. Go in the doc. Go in the doc, and I'm gonna send you to another. Okay. Click that link. See if that right. works for you. Scroll up to 10:05. <laughs> okay. What? All right. This is great for the show. Oh, exciting. great. I need access. <laughs> ah, shit. Oh, wonderful. I remember. All right, I'm gonna fix it. Uh, okay, okay, it's fixed. The next morning to get the barium all out. Of <laughs> Listen, the we're learning the surgery. and growing. And I remember doing it. Oh Lord. Okay. That Does that work? Is that yeah, good? That works fine. Uh, uh, Kevin Macaliki, if you like the Beatles, you probably love Acid Henge. Okay, I'll check that out. Paul Bianetti, case managers assigned to individuals at housing, at a housing first approach has shown promising results from what I've read. Whatever. <laughs> Wasted tapes. K K W Miller got two per two point two percent of the vote. Checking in on K W Miller. That's wow. exciting. Uh, thank you, Grant Hallmark says Moonbase Eight is great. Bill Thomason says I love your beautiful bone. These are all. This is this is a lot of irrelevant comedies uh, comments. Well, they're old now. Closing midnight. Rudy love the jam. I just Vic. I found out yeah. this morning had not listened to I my Rudy at the Four it. Seasons it's song. So rude. I know. And I haven't seen all of Moonbase yet. So there's a lot to get I'm, through. There's from. a lot of content to get to. Uh, and then Gray Niner, of course, good old Gray Niner, saying more truck horns, please. Well, he's just obsessed. He's obsessed <laughs> with his own horning. <laughs> okay. We've cleared the Super Chats for now. I'm sure there'll be more coming in now that people have finally realized that I am acknowledging them. They were getting a little upset that you weren't. I apologize. We're trying our best to put on a good show. Like Pancho Verde just said, why do cows have bells? Because their horns don't work. Hi, Thanks. folks. Did and somebody in the Super it. Chat guess my uh, Beatles slash 2001 connection? I saw it somewhere. Who Was it someone in the Zoom or someone in the, the YouTube chat? 2001? What? Because that was what, 1969, wasn't it? There you go. He was, he was, uh, somebody, Anton, a cameraman Anton says he worked knows. on, is it an actor? Anton, are you there? 
Let me unmute. Something to do with the rooftop concert. Here's Anton. Hey. Hey, how's it going? So that 2001 connection to the Beatles is that I believe that, well, they used for Magical Mystery Tour, didn't they use the footage from, I thought it was from Dr. Strangelove, actually, not 2001. Mm. No, all, that's not what I was looking doing, for. Oh, sorry. Fuck. That's not sorry, what I was looking for. Space hunt? What I was looking for is uh, the guy, Dan Richter is his name. Dan Richter okay. is the was the main uh, ape in 2001, who was sort of known. Uh, he was a famous mime in in uh, the, the mime world. Thank you very much. In, 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 in England, <laughs> he's um, he was the guy that uh, you know we see throw up the bones and everything, wow. and he oh, was cool. um, living with John and Yoko at the. At the time, I don't know, around that time, Welcome. he was uh, the house. <laughs> he was Wait, John and Yoko's. The, uh, oh, sorry. He's the housemate of John and Yoko's. He was also a, a junkie. He was a heroin addict oh. who was it's sort of better. who was sort of John Lennon's. Uh, I'm bringing all this shit. I'm bringing it to Georgia. I'm sorry. Oh what the hell's going on? Oh, no. What is going on? Oh, like, ten what is going on? <laughs> Who's there? Is that, is that Cassie? It's a car can. Cam car can here. How did Cammy do this? This is Cammy. Car what this is, is, uh, is this James Corden uh, karaoke? <laughs> what are you guys doing? What is going on? First of all, I got Beatles drops going nuts back here. Cammy, how did you do that? Uh, what did they do? The adaptation they wanted to do. <laughs> Anton's still talking. Anton, what? <laughs> Sorry. What the Lord of the Rings know. adaptation the Beatles wanted to do. They wanted uh, Stanley yeah. Kubrick to direct it. Uh, I don't know if that's they did. That's a, to that's, play, that's yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's other connections, but the big one for me again, I'll say it again because it was a total cacophony. If you'll just let me get this out. <laughs> Dan Richter played the ape. He was also living with John and Yoko. Probably the guy. I don't want to accusation the shit out of this guy but pretty much sure he got lennon many people are saying many people are saying he got lennon into the the brown sugar the good stuff <laughs> ross phillips has another connection to rising. what's that another ross connection has another connection to the movie okay ross says. what's your second yeah. your secondary connection well the bit with the eggs the the ape that gets beaten to death was played by Ringo. The ape that gets beaten to death was played by Ringo? Really? That's not correct. <laughs> I'm warning you with peace and love. The ape that plays the... Help! <laughs> the... <laughs> well, Ringo was in a movie called Caveman, but that's, that's yeah. different. Mm, I get high with <laughs> well, you know who can settle this? An actual journalist. Dave, Dave Weigel. Weigel. <laughs> All right, let's talk to you guys. Dealer. Dave, you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Where, where are you coming in from? I'm in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I just was with one of the Democrats running for Senate there. So my, my job is not done. <laughs> Wait, are you uh, are you about to make a big are you about to make a rant video uh, about cancel culture? We just all you need uh, are your yeah. sunglasses. <laughs> Uh, sir, sir, no, I'm a sovereign citizen. Uh, sir, I do not recognize the Let's make a video. authority of your laws inside this vehicle. Yeah, I realize why those guys do it. It's kind of fun. I honestly just like I just got out of it. Was pulling out, pulling over. Okay, uh, good. I'm, I'm now I'm not no, I'm not not breaking laws anymore. I'm, okay, I'm I was gonna say I don't want I don't right. want to witness the uh, head-on collision of Dave Weigel <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia. There's I'm a lot of I'm accidents. This is illegal. Uh, good to see you, friend. How's everything? You're on the road. I assume you're. Yeah. Covering um what what <laughs> We have a new uh we have a new feature here in the studio that's not exactly working correctly. Um what is the focus of your coverage this week? Uh what what are you what are you down there doing? Uh, I a lot more than I thought. So I was going to I was here to cover the Senate race, right? There's two Senate seats that went to runoffs. If Democrats win both, they go 50-50 in the Senate. If they don't win them, they they don't. So I was here to cover that, and then Republicans d demanded and got this re this recount, which actually could it could end up as two recounts. But uh, there's one happening, kind of kind of now. It's really getting underway in the next in the next days. They're going to count five million ballots to make Trump feel like it wasn't stolen. Not that's going <laughs> to not that's going to do that, but uh, 
But that's this is the all the political the voting that's still happening and the recounting that's happening. It's all here right now. Well, in, like, what's the, the second recount? State of Georgia. What, what 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 do you what do you mean oh. when you say the second recount? Not to get too complicated, but it, I guess it's kind of funny. Uh, this so the state audits the vote to make sure it, everything went well, and that they, they decided that to audit it, you need to recount everything. But then when they're done with that, Trump could also request a different recount. I think we have a that's, very that's what I mean. It's, of winning. <laughs> it's really weird. And uh, it's a lot. That's like you know, five million ballots is a lot, right? That's a lot of people just. And what do they mean? Stuff with the, the they have to do a hand count. Yeah. Doesn't that seem more so prone to error? Tables, yeah. Doesn't that seem more prone to error than like the way it gets counted through the machines? Uh, it kind of is, except sometimes like the machines just don't, you know, you, somebody, and this happened to me, I was eating dinner when I, when I filled up my early ballot in, in, uh, in DC and splashed like Sichuan chili oil on it. <laughs> so I had to double check. <laughs> so I had to double check that it was taken, but really that kind of stuff, like, uh, an absentee ballot maybe was wet and the machine didn't take it. So they'll, they'll always find, if there's 5 million votes, they'll find like, right. I don't know, a thousand errors. But the problem is uh, for them is Biden won by 14,000. And that's, you know, right. statistically that never gets overturned. Unless there was just some computer somewhere that accidentally added 50,000 votes to Biden. That's not going to overdo it. Yeah. They just need to, yeah, I was at a protest yesterday with uh, Alex, uh, not Alex Jones, but the uh, Owen Schroyer, the um, oh, yeah. the I, you know the sidekick on Alex Jones, uh, the guy with the little um, go- the they, guy with the little kid, beard. He's the, just doing like an Alex Jones impression, yeah. basically. So what, yeah, what he was just, he saying? The, the, uh, he was like, "Well, the fact that there was going to be recount at all shows that Biden's going to lose." That's what he was telling people. He's been wrong about some things in the past. So I was <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> well, what about the uh, latest claim from the president? Uh, uh, about this Dominion, uh, the Dominion software company, whoever's doing, because there, there were, you know, there is yeah. sort of this. Uh, I mean, the Democrats have this going back last four years ago. This idea of the computer voting is very mm-hmm. susceptible to hacking and very susceptible to, you know, all kinds of shenanigans. What, where's his yeah. new stuff coming from? This, this, this Dominion shit. That's all OAN. That's the One American News Channel. So uh, that's uh, their standards are not great. I mean, this is a channel that literally called the Alabama race for Roy Moore over Doug Jones when he, <laughs> that wasn't what happened. Right. So that report is is factually uh, not true. I mean, we just keep saying we just keep kind of getting exasperated and saying this is not true. This is not true. <laughs> but it came from that. Uh, it doesn't make sense because what Repu- what conservatives are and I've seen this before. Like this did happen after two thousand four. Uh, like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. The anti-vaccine Kennedy yeah. had this whole thing was because well the exit poll showed that it was tied and yet Bush won so something went wrong, um, but exit polls get like refresh overnight and the ballots the, the system now in Georgia not that anything's perfect but they do have paper backup so the stuff where somebody just went in and fiddled with the machine and rigged it um, that's you know I guess anything's like any any Ocean's Thirteen thing is possible right but statistically. An election where Republicans did better than they thought in Georgia, like they actually they thought they're going to lose more seats down the ballot. Right. Where um, they they got two runoffs, like the the evidence that somebody went in and meddled and was like, oh, we're just going to tweak it by this much. Uh, there is none. Right. But that's what he's talking about. It's the OAN thing that says because some stuff was changed on election night, uh, that means that they might have deleted like I think they said two seven two point seven million votes, yeah. which makes no sense. That's a lot. Uh, but what happens? I mean, th- yeah, but like. The way votes are reported is everyone has is at the precinct, and the precinct has uh, either calls somebody or has like a software, and it says, "Hey, this precinct we had, you know, 500 Biden votes and 400 Trump votes." And there's some precincts that say, "Oh no, wait, we, what we meant was we had, you know, 50 Biden right. votes and and 40 Trump votes." So that stuff happens, and if you're watching TV, the numbers can move. Yeah, but that's all. That's always what that is. And it's yeah. like, yeah, it's just human error, and some people that are probably under yeah. a, lot of, a lot of stress. Can you imagine? Like you, it's so key to think about on the precinct level because so many of these people. Yeah. I felt so bad when all these all these uh, accusations were going because nine. You know, we've all been to these places. They're just like nice, normal people yeah. who are just doing their mm-hmm. like civic duty to try to help out that day. There's some people that kind of do it. That's their job, and there's supervision and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But so many of these people, no one's in the position to like make this, uh, you know, this this nefarious decision to like throw in a you know a national election. That's why it's kind of nice yeah. it's all spread out. I mean, it feels like there needs to be some kind of national standards, perhaps. 
but the like mm-hmm. some kind of baseline like process that gets kind of enacted everywhere but um what do you think i mean what is your like uh you know we're sitting at a bar having a beer what is your yeah. two cents about where this is going over the next couple of weeks with trump is it truly impossible to mm-hmm. say how he's going to back off of the ledge of the way way he's talking i mean what's he going to do i think we'll have victory uh, there's, <laughs> <Sorry>. there's, <laughs> i just heard the drop yeah uh, so there's not much he can. I mean, like if it was easy enough to say we got fewer votes, we're going to sue and 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 have the state say we won. Like people would just do that all the time. That'd be that'd be great. You know, <laughs> like the, this would be the go-to uh, move. I, it, yeah, losing losing's pretty bad. So it'd be great if you could just say we we don't think we did. But there's a bunch. Of, I'll go into all the details. But all the lawsuits basically, the premise is not we found enough votes to swing the election. The premise is we have enough questions raised that a judge should look at this and say, I guess we don't know who won and that we can't assign the electoral votes. And that is, uh, that's never been done. That's about, I take it back. That was done in 1876 when uh-huh. like, uh, you know, the, when the, when, uh, the result was bringing back Jim Crow, well, creating Jim Crow actually. Right. And it, uh, but it's not, it doesn't happen that often that people say, you're right. It was a weird election. We're going to throw it out. Um, there's, there's, there was proof of, you know, fraud in an election, North Carolina a year ago. Me and, they just had another congressional election was the response. Uh, so the, I think that's probably, you'll probably hear somebody on, on Fox or OAN float that, like, why can't we just vote again? Um, which you, you can't because there's a deadline for the Electoral right. College. I think, so not like I know every judge and they're all going to do this, but it's not like Trump has found a lot. Because let's, let's say you got a lawsuit and says, hey, uh, we found on the rolls there's like 50 people who voted, but they, um, they like were, had, had, felon, they had felonies in our right. state they can't vote. Well, you can't say, oh, well, I know who they voted for because it's a secret ballot. So it's all about <laughs> let's throw enough stuff in there that some judge says, I guess I guess Trump's right. This is so confusing. We're just not going to count it. And that's not been happening anywhere. So two things. One is the, I like the idea that you say that this has never happened before. But what concerns me is we're in like a year yeah. of shit that's never happened before. And yeah, yeah. Certainly... I always hesitate when I say right. that. Yeah. But um, what is his. I mean, is he just going to eventually say, well, I can't, we lost, but we still think we won and go fuck yourself. And I'm going to be over here contesting this for the next, you know, four years. And it's, we're going to have this kind of uh, opposition party, which, you know, fair, fair enough. The Democrats had that after 2016 to some degree. There yeah. was plenty of people saying it was a stolen election and the Russians meddled and everything. Is that just, we're just going to have the uh, bizarro version of that for the next four years? I think so. But uh, to be fair to people then, it, it was, uh, it wasn't, we think the votes were counted wrong and you should throw it out. It was, um, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just describing it, not defending it. The ones, the ones I talked to four years ago were saying, well, yeah, this is our system, but one candidate won the popular vote and the candidate who fell over the line electoral college is is crazy and the right. electors should have the right to so um they're not they're not even saying that they're right. just saying the election was fraudulent i think a way this could because the thing about trump is that when he lost the iowa caucus he said it was rigged and they should have a new election uh when he won in 2016 he said the popular vote was rigged every time right. he loses he says it's rigged right so he's always gonna i i always said if this is like a 15 point landslide he would say, that's not, that's crazy. It's rigged. Right. I had big crowds and no one had a big crowd for right. Biden. So clearly it was fraud. Right. He was always going to do this. Um, so I think he'll probably never concede. Um, he will like say that uh, there were uncertainty about the election. He's leaving his options open to run for president again. And he will try to lead kind of a resistance movement outside the president. I think that's the most likely. Will he, will he show more, up? That's, at, that's more likely. Okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, will he show up at, at inauguration day for <laughs> Biden and do the uh, transfer of power? Yeah. I think he might not even like because that's not going to be fun. That's going <laughs> to be him won't. listening to <laughs> it's listening so for embarrassing. That, two hours, I guess. I mean, he'd need to sit there. Uh-huh. He'd be surrounded by people like you know Hillary Clinton yeah. and Bill Clinton and Barack Obama all celebrating. Um, Sitting there like I, this I, with his he arms might crossed. Get that. Uh, yeah. What about? Yeah. I was talking to my friend this morning. We we're sort of describing this scenario because I think Kelly or uh, Kaylee Kaylee McEnany was saying that Trump yeah. will be the uh, the titular head of the Republican Party for decades to come. <laughs> and so we're like yeah. picturing 
a hundred year old Trump, and we were looking up pictures of we we're looking up pictures of Sumner Redstone, like the last few years of Sumner Redstone. <laughs> he looks like this cor- like this living corpse with a with a toupee sitting on top. It's kind of fun to imagine like this slowly dying, diseased. Or, or when they brought Trump Bob that, Dole to the uh, or Bob RNC. Dole was just like, and they're just they wheeling Trump up. out in front of rallies, and he's got to do his YMCA dance, <laughs> <laughs> held up by strings. There's something fun about that, that he is around for a while, but he's just a total clown. Maybe there's like a Ben, a ben Garrison picture of Trump in a, in, a, in, a, in a closet somewhere, and Trump himself cannot age. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a very muscular Ben Garrison painting of, or, or uh, no, I, I, uh, I mean, he, he's, his family tends to age kind of normally and then get dementia, right? Like his dad got <laughs> dementia and died. Um, his brother's an alcohol, one of his brothers alcoholic. The other one was like fine until he got COVID. Right. But so some people, quickly. I mean, uh, yeah, I, but I, 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 I think it's more just when he's no longer got uh, legal invulnerability and land, you know, memos coming from his attorney general saying actually crime's not, not illegal if he does it. Right. Uh, I think it's more. How much are, is the Republican Party's mission just going to be like defending the former president from lawsuits? And I'm not trying to spin a resistance fantasy. I'm just saying there's going to be a, like ongoing stuff that he now can be subpoenaed for. Right. So I think the idea of him just going around and saying whatever he wants is, is fanciful. But uh, no, he'll hold rallies. He'll, people want him to campaign for him. He'll come right. in for special elections. Like they're, they're, they're definitely they're, they're in for a pound uh, with him now. And yeah. I was with um, a couple of Republicans who, were go- who thought they were going to run for president in 2024 like two weeks ago. And they're all, they will not come out and say, and yeah, I'm going to vote for him. But like, I was with Rubio yesterday. I should, I should, was it yesterday? Two days ago with Marco Rubio. And people are asking about his future. And, and like, you know, doesn't know what it is because, like, he assumes Trump is going to want to run the party until something happens to him. Yeah. I can't imagine Marco Rubio wants to get back into the primary with Donald Trump again. That's an Donald absolutely Trump. humiliating. Not end well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Chapo guys had an absolutely fantastic idea of, for Trump, which is the talk show, the night, the, the comp- competing yeah. late <laughs> night, like, go up against the Tonight Show, the Trump show. Rocket we would, he'd, yeah. he'd, he'd come out there, there'd be no script. He'd get out there, do a monologue, rant, and then talk to famous yeah. people, talk to uh, Rich Little and he Robert would, Davi. I would, I would think that uh, Mike Huckabee's sweating that because he's like, my Huckabee Tonight show yeah. could get swept me? away. Tim, I like your idea I mean, where, he, where he goes into a White House, uh, like a Truman simulation. Show, kind of Truman yeah. Show situation where he still thinks he's the president <laughs> right. and he's got a cast of characters yeah. higher. Um, well, the, go ahead, Dave. Sorry. I was, I was, I was going to say, yeah, they give him like the president show set. They wheel that out from whatever, mm-hmm. whatever studio it was in comedy central. Right. Uh, no, that's not crazy. Right. And he's, he's much funnier than Mike Huckabee. Like he knows what a joke is and he knows like, how, how come he can't even really tell a mean joke in a way that lands? Whereas <laughs> Trump definitely can. Trump yeah. can like make fun of people in a way it lands. I don't think that's crazy at all. I think, so the thing about Trump always was that you weren't just supporting him because of his policies. You were forgiving a lot of his voters were forgiving whatever he did because he just made them feel good. So, like, the Trump MAGA lifestyle, I don't see any reason why that would stop. There's going to be people who don't, they don't care about politics in any way. They just yeah. love him. Or policy. Yeah, that's great. I mean, he's, he, yeah. I never thought he was, if he lost, he was going to go away. I was joking back during impeachment. Was like, well, if they actually remove him, he'll just, like, run against Pence in the primary and beat him and be the nominee. I mean, he, they, he, they he, acted he, like, he, like they, they never acted like the winner, in a way, like, in, in the past four years. It was always yeah. that we were the 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 opposition to the deep state there's always that feeling of like you know yeah. when once and it never delivered it was never like well you guys won you have power if you want to like prosecute hillary clinton for her crimes why right. aren't you you I know trump would so, just like tweet do something yeah do something, <laughs> like, yeah. Do so, something. so it's at, it's, at it's gonna be in general yeah. please, please investigate. it's yeah. not gonna feel that different to see him now actually being in the opposition yeah. saying the same shit it's just going like, to... No, I think, I think you're totally right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, as long as I'm totally right. And we just do want to also thank you, Dave, for <laughs> uh, on uh, election night, you called in. It was a lot of fun that night. Yeah. But you did... We were going through a period where it was feeling like Trump was winning, taking a lot of... And you reminded us that yeah. it, was, it, was, it was going to look like this and that even though... I guess you could talk maybe for a second about the polls. Everyone said the polls were so yeah. wrong, but... Overall, in the if you look at the totality of how everything went, it did go a little bit the way it was predicted on the pre- presidential level. Yeah. I mean, there were polls that were crazy yeah, so, were saying Biden was going to win by 15 points and stuff. But in general, it kind of played out as predicted. 
Yeah, actually, it was kind of the opposite of um, of four years ago, where the average of the state polls was better than the the national poll average. National poll nailed it last time. I think this time it ended up being plus uh, eight Biden. It's going to end up maybe being plus four and a half or five. But um, the polling models just they they assume like a really big electorate, and I think they missed some of the uh, you know non the guys who don't vote in any election but they love Trump. And there were, yeah. it turned out. If there was five million of them, it would have been a landslide. There were more like nine million of them, right. and that pushed everything closer. But the the polls in the key states were were, were on, and unlike last time, there was polling in like Georgia, where I'm at right now. The polling underestimated how Democrats were going to do, uh, which did not happen in 2016. The polling in Michigan was pretty right, with a couple of outliers. Like the the poll there that's seen as the gold standard poll. The final thing was um, the epic poll. It's called, which is kind of funny. Uh, the epic poll in Michigan, uh, even funnier, the leader, of the, the, the guy who runs that poll's name, Bernie Porn. And every every four years, people realize there's a guy named Bernie Porn who runs the epic poll. <laughs> every four Porn? years, it's amazing. What? Is that e -po like yes. E-P-O-C-H? E-P-O, what? How do or you is spell it epic? It? Epic, like what? like a Faith No More song or right. like a meme. Wow, epic. Right. And then his last name, P-O-R-N, <laughs> uh, which is. You want another one? Hi. His, Hi. It, 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 this is Bernie his, Porn. It, 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 it was the family name was pornography, but then they moved to Ellis Island. And they shortened it. Um, <laughs> but like he, uh, they were like, oh, Biden by five. Uh, the Senate race is like a little bit less, and that's what happened. Pennsylvania, the polls were like, I think a little bit cl closer than, uh, or, or a little bit more optimistic for Biden. But it wasn't like before, and Trump didn't get like every single uh, undecided voter like he got last time, and because there was almost no third party vote, that didn't split. So right. the polls were not terrible. And by the end of this, they're going to – the things that were really wrong were the – actually, the things is the thing that's driving people crazy in Washington um, is – Democrats, I should say, is – and in some Republicans is that they pay for the good polls, right? They have right. these people who – they don't just work for, like, a newspaper. They take make a lot of money. They do these focus groups. They do the real research. And their polls were really bad. Like, they right. thought – stuff that was tied uh, ended up going 10 points. Like a, those, a Montana, for example. Yeah, uh, th Go Those ahead. polls Sorry. are valuable to them because that's how they decide how to spend money. That's how they decide where to focus yeah, totally. things. Like The polls we look at don't yeah. really matter. It shouldn't matter to you. It shouldn't be something you really follow that closely. It doesn't really, it's just weird. Yeah. It's like a weird hobby for people. But yeah, like polls used mm -hmm. by, by campaigns are like actual tools that help them decide what, what they should be doing yeah. and their priorities. All right, yeah, man, and, listen. And they were totally wrong, yeah. Was, go what? ahead, sorry, I keep interrupting you. But I'll listen. You, <laughs> you just listen. listen now. You stop oh, come on, man. with your, <laughs> your oh, <no>. filibustering. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Get him out of here. Say it again. All right, well, no, I just want to wrap things up because we're we're going long on our show. It's nasty a quick-moving show. Nasty we have, do you have guy. any uh, space good. puns? Do you have any sp uh, puns on uh, about space you want to contribute? Or are you bu too busy to think about stuff like that? Oh, I missed the opening joke. Uh dang no no that's okay i'm uh i have i have uh i have poll numbers i don't have jokes i have, <laughs> I have serious stuff yeah. <laughs> we weren't expecting what, what, what's I just, the space thing i missed the space thing we're what, just doing what, space what, puns don't here doug give what give uh dave one of your space puns uh why did the korean guitar taste delicious why did the korean guitar taste delicious because it had i don't know why because it had boba frets. <laughs> oh, all right. Why did yeah, the SJW? <laughs> why did the SJW astronaut get picked on by the MAGA astronauts? Why did the SJW astronaut get picked on by the MAGA astronauts? Because he kept asking for a safe space station. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you very much, Dave. Why was Saturn's wife upset? Awesome. Why, why was Saturn? Hold on, one more. Why was <laughs> Saturn's <laughs> wife upset? Because uh, he wasn't wearing his rings. <laughs> okay. Thank you. His ring, not <laughs> rings. I got a All big right, laugh. Right Thank there. you. Bye, there bye. That's what Goodbye. We're about. Let him get. Let him go. He he bailed. Let's talk to Steph. Steph, are you ready? Steph or Steph two? Steph. This guy's back. Hello. Hi. Steph. This guy. Steph. 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 Hi. Hi there. Steph. Steph. Hi. How are you? Hello, I'm doing really well. How are you guys? Really good. How can we help you today? And what can I do for you, Tuts? Uh, I got nothing for you. Um, I like <laughs> Moonbase 8 a lot. Thank you very um, much. Yeah, I like how your character was going to the moon 
um, to spread religion, but was seemingly pretty like bad at religion. Didn't even know how to do a dinner prayer. That yeah. was funny. Thank you. Well, people are yeah. loving the show. It's nice to hear. It's it's a uh, when are you, you going to stop playing games with God? Like I've said before, it's a nice. It's a it's a it's a salve. It's a it's a nice show. It's it's funny. It's not trying to be so serious. I heard some negative things about it, saying it's not. It's it's pretty light. It's light. I'm like that's. More. Who cares? Why does everything have to be so dire and dark? And There's a dirty cash mean. prize of one thousand dollars, and I, I do think that shit perfect. all day long. Fuck them. Donald, yeah. John, All right. President. Thank you, Steph. You dumb son of a bitch. Yeah. What do you mean? We want a pun. You want a new pun? Sure. Oh, right. yeah, I like you going through these Trebek. <laughs> There's a daily cash prize of one thousand dollars and fuck. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, fuck what? You know what? Fuck Alex Trebek. I'm sorry to be the guy to say it, uh, but fuck him. Ouch. I'm so sick of this. He's just a guy that reads off a card. I can do it. Watch this. Trivia Pursuit. Here we go. I have it right here. It's not so hard. Watch this. <laughs> Doug, you little prick. Here's how it's going to go. Doug? Where are you come? Where are you from, Doug? Uh, Darien, Illinois. Huh? Where? Illinois. Oh, yeah? What's And it says here that you are a musician. You play, you make beats. What's yeah. that about? <laughs> yeah, Alex, I, 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 I play around with music on my computer. Okay, this <laughs> cowboy tune is the official song of Kansas. Fuck them. <laughs> this cowboy tune is the official song of the state of Kansas. What is Camp Town Races? Incorrect, you idiot. It's what is Home on the Range? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah dumb son of a bitch. See, you cunt. Fuck. Fuck. And we have Vic Berger from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Vic, thanks for being with us today. Glad to be here, Alex. Uh, woo, who has the most voluptuous females in Toontown? Uh, what is... She has... I'll do it the right way. She has the most voluptuous female... The most voluptuous... Fe, she is the most voluptuous female in Toontown. In Toontown. <laughs> Uh, Toontown. <laughs> I don't know where that is. Oh, but it, that's. To, I know. Can I? Can I steal? You can steal. Here comes Doug with the steal. Ding, 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 ding. Who is Jessica Rabbit? That's correct. Five hundred oh, points yeah. for Doug. Wow. You win a Maserati. Very good. See what I mean? Anybody with a fourth grade education can do that. <laughs> Shit. We don't need Canadians doing it either. We can have Americans, actual Americans, doing that kind of work. Trebek's got the answers too. It's not like he's like smart. There you go. God damn. No, it's very sad, and we uh, we we salute him. I'm just being facetious. Fuck it. Tell me they're not corrupt. Just trying to be a little controversial because controversy creates conversation. God damn. Do you like that, guys? Controversy creates conversation. Put that on a T-shirt. What the fuck? That'd be the worst. That'd be the worst T-shirt. Controversy. Who would talk to that person? Controversy. What the fuck am I, I think I doing? that's what the whole presidency was about. Right? Controversy <laughs> creates conversation. Join me every week. Let's do a commercial for Office Hours. Hi, everybody. It's Tim Heidecker here. Office Hours Live airs every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. Controversy creates conversation. Join us. <laughs> Those little five second. <laughs> Those little five second, ten second bumpers we'll put on. Hi, everybody. This week on Office Hours, Constantine Anthony and Dave Weigel. Join us. Controversy creates conversation. Join us. Where's that music? <laughs> no. I, I wanted to leave that one clean. Yeah, okay. leave that clean. Hi, everybody. Tim Heidecker here with the Holy Trinity. Join us this week with Constantine Anthony and Dave Weigel. Controversy. Ah, fuck it. Let's try it again. <laughs> Take it back. Hi, everybody. Tim Heidecker here from Office Hours Live. We've got Constantine Anthony and Dave Weigel coming up. This morning, join us. Controversy creates conversation. Can I get one more? Okay. Give me that other thing that you were yeah, playing. What was the other thing? Oh, I got it. Uh, hold on. That's um. What's up? What's who do we have on the schedule next week? Do we know yet? Let's make something up. Give me a couple of perennials. Uh, yeah, Fred let's. Armisen? Fred Tim, Armisen. Tim, drop some big names and then <laughs> that, right when the show starts, say oh, they had to cancel, just to get the numbers up. <laughs> okay. OG um, Simpson. Damn, Jeffrey Tubin. <laughs> Can 
Hey everybody, Tim Heidecker here for Office Hours Live. Next week, we've got Ellen DeGeneres and Coldplay. Join us here. Controversy creates conversation. <laughs> Hi everybody, Tim Heidecker here. We've got an incredible show oh, coming shit. up next Thursday at 10 a.m. Controversy creates conversation. Join us. Fuck! Wait, Stephanie's probably bored. <laughs> All right, well, that's not well, my she problem. She never had anything to begin with. So. Well, listen, if you're enjoying the show today, oh, we're going to be moving things oh, over to on, the man. office hours, after hours experience, exclusive for Patreon members. Conversation creates... Con controversy creates conversation. <laughs> Let me get a couple more puns in before. All right. Or I can save oh, for yeah. after. I'll save some for after. Do one more to close things out. Don't forget, folks, controversy <clears throat> creates conversation. Why was J.J. Abrams so desperate to direct Star Wars? Why was J.J. Abrams so desperate to create Star Wars? To direct Star Wars. To direct, <laughs> to direct Star Wars. Few people know this, but his full name is Jar Jar Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Tommy Chong love astronauts? Jar Jar Abrams. Why does uh, Tommy Chong love astronauts? Why does Tommy Chong love astronauts? Because they're up in smoke? Because they, because they go far out, man. Oh, that's mm. funny. I had a far out, man. Very, very good. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. It was a nice Did show today. Did you hear today. that Michael Jordan, was at, <laughs> Michael Jordan was at Chipotle recently? Any more Super Chats, Matt, we can get in before the end of the show? <laughs> there was like a smiley face in there. But oh, not really. Nice. Thank you. Let Go ahead, Doug. Let ahead. me do one more. Did you hear that Michael Jordan was at Chipotle recently, Tim? Did you hear about this? Michael Jordan was at Chipotle recently. And I didn't hear his, that. his former teammate was working at Chipotle. Uh, the former teammate asked, what would you like in your burrito, Michael? Do you know what Michael said? No. Bean me up, Scotty. Right. Bean me up, Scotty. Bean, oh, Bean good. me up. Bean why did me up. Why did TMZ host Harvey Levin become an astronaut? Why did TMZ's Harvey Levin become an astronaut? I have no idea. He heard there were a lot of stars hiding out in space. Ah, I love the voice crack. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Controversy creates conversation. Join us in the After Hours experience I, only at Patreon. Shut up. Patreon.com. <laughs> Give me your thank you for listening. Coming up. I up. love America. Oh, yes, I do. Did we break our 100,000 Do we have subscribers? Father Guido Sarducci on the waiting? Oh, oh my God. It's Father Guido Sarducci. Wow. Oh, no, no. I thought it was Giorgio Moroder. Thank you for listening. All right, see everybody. Thanks for watching. For you. But others hearing this Damn. Damn. Things they would argue. The Beach Boys aren't kids. I anymore. do not sing what I believe. I only give them facts. No, 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 no. If they believe quite otherwise, it still will have impact. My entire life right now is about owning the legs. That's it. Defund the police abomination before someone gets hurt. That's their concern, not mine, my friend. They're free to fantasize. Spit in my mouth. I suppose that's true. Frankly, I find this whole thing a waste of time.